First, the 10 to 12 weeks of the maize crop cycle must be weed free. It must be clean like a dining room. This is when more than 50% of the nutrition is used by the crop and that process has to be uninterrupted. Weeds, they do compete with the crop for space, for sunlight, for nutrition, and also moisture. So we must keep our maize fields weed free even throughout the whole maize crop cycle. Weeds are a menacing enemy to crop productivity. Here are the statistics. If you fail to control weeds in the first five weeks of the maize crop cycle, then more than 50% of the yield is gone. For example, if you fail to control rotibolia in maize, then throughout the maize crop cycle, then more than 57%, up to 80% of the yield is gone. Folamum is a real threat to crop production and productivity in Africa. Farmers should adhere to three principles for effective chemical control of folamum. Number one, regular scouting every two to three days. Number two, early and positive pest identification. Number three, timer spraying with appropriate registered pesticides. Always remember to alternate pesticides with different active ingredients to curb possible resistance. Ultimately, the maize crop will require 18 to 23 kgs of nitrogen, 7 to 11 kgs of phosphorus, and the same amount of potashi to produce one ton. All things being equal. At planting, farmers should always apply appropriate amount of basal dressing. The basal dressing will contain phosphorus, will also contain startup nitrogen and potashi. The startup nitrogen will only sustain the maize crop for the next 21 to 25 days, but then after you should always start to top dress. We recommend that farmers should top dress their crop between three to six weeks of the maize crop cycle. Point number seven, time of planting you should always plant with the first effective rains. And in fact, whenever you receive more than 35 millimeters of rainfall within a period of two to three days, then please plant so that you start early and so that you tap into the heat units, which normally falls in the first three months of summer seasons, for example, in Southern Africa. Point number eight, phosphorus availability in the soil. Farmers should always sample their soils for analysis so that they can determine the levels of phosphorus in the soil. Otherwise, the optimum phosphorus level should be more than 25 parts per million for you to grow maize sustainably. Any phosphorus deficiency should be addressed promptly. Point number nine, soil organic matter buildup. This is very, very important. And whenever you harvest your crop and you are doing your land preparation, you should always incorporate all the crop residue, the previous crop residues. At the end of the day, it will optimize moisture retention nutrient retention in the soil. That's very important and it's important for crop productivity in the next crop. Point number 10, moisture management. Climate change has brought in high frequencies of mid-season dry spells, high frequencies of terminal droughts. Water harvesting will become very, very critical to adapt to climate change. And it starts with the right set of land preparations and at the right depth. Wet ripping is also important with regards to conserving moisture in the field. You come in with a reaper, tractor-driven reaper for large-scale commercial farmers and Magoya reaper for smallholder farmers so that you create a moisture bank which will conserve the moisture for you. Mulching will create a blanket of cover on top of your soil and it will create a moisture bank which will conserve water in the field. And lastly, point number 11, never underestimate the value of crop rotation as a port of managing disease and pest carryovers. So farmers, in conclusion, it is important to improve crop productivity. If you improve productivity, the cost of producing a ton of produce reduces and profit margins will widen up. Remember, it starts with the right seed.